Okay, Discovery has the runway in sight. Copy, runway. Discovery descending through 3,000 feet, 3 miles to touchdown. 1,000 feet. Landing gear is down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Drag chute deploy. Nose gear touchdown. And Discovery is home. Return to flight mission STS-114 culminates at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Discovery's landing initiates a complex series of activities. The orbiter is recovered by a convoy of over 20 specialized vehicles. A variety of specialists assist the astronauts with system shutdown, egress, and medical assessments. I'd like to say hello to everybody, and on behalf of the STS-114 crew, we have had a fantastic mission. We are so glad to be able to come back and say it was successful and we have resupplied the International Space Station and we've met the test objectives of the space shuttle program. We brought Discovery back in great shape. As you can see behind us, it's crew was really anxious to walk around and see what the outside looked like and it looks fantastic. We got a great group of folks here that are taking care of Discovery and taking care of us. After the initial recovery operations on the runway, the orbiter is towed four miles to a mate demate device, or MDD, where it is deserviced. Once at the MDD, the week-long turnaround process begins, with crews working around the clock in preparation for the shuttle's cross-country return home. 13. Discovery's onboard fuel cell systems are shut down, and the orbiter's electrical systems are switched to ground power. The shuttle is hoisted and aligned with the MDD's work platforms so that technicians may have access to the orbiter's systems. The main engines are flushed of residual fuel to protect the turbo pumps from possible contamination. The most hazardous part of the deservicing is the draining of the monomethyl hydrazine fuel from the orbiter's rockets and thrusters. This procedure is commonly called ESCAPE, an acronym for the self-contained atmospheric protective equipment that the technicians must wear. It is a lengthy process mandated by safety requirements due to the highly toxic nature of the fuel. Once ESCAPE is complete, the aft engine area is prepared for installation of the aerodynamic tail cone. This 10,000 pound fairing is mounted over the main engine nozzles to help reduce drag during the ferry flight. Once the tail cone is in place, the orbiter's body flap is raised to fit flush against the tail cone's bottom, and the landing gear is raised and locked into place. Discovery is now ready to be mated to the Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, or SCA. The orbiter is lifted some 60 feet into the air by the MDD's sling. The SCA, a modified 747, is then towed to the MDD and carefully positioned underneath. The shuttle is now lowered onto three attached points on the 747. Once this slow, exacting process is complete, the sling is removed from the orbiter and the shuttle carrier aircraft is carefully towed from the MDD. With the orbiter mounted securely atop the 747, the piggyback pair is ready to fly. Although the weight of the orbiter is well within the SCA's carrying ability, the additional drag forces it to fly at much lower altitudes and much slower speeds than a commercial 747. The 747 makes its long taxi to the 15,000-foot Edwards runway. The flight crew gets takeoff clearance from the tower. The throttles are advanced and the brakes released. After an extended takeoff, the SCA is airborne, and the duo climb into the desert sky. Discovery is on its way home.